Daniel, um, I'm of the Christian faith, you're of the Jewish faith, unless you've recently converted to Islam, but I don't think that's the case, am I right? Well, I was going to consider the church of Biden where you don't have to do anything. You just stay in the basement and sleep all day in honor of your founder and idol. <laughs> okay. And who is that? Joe Biden. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no. Right, right. But, oh, I see. I see. No, but I'm saying who is Joe Biden worshiping? Uh, Joe Biden, I think, worships a small potato that he found uh, under his bed at one point. Uh, he tries right. to it. He tries to dress it up. Thank you, Daniel. My my favorite, or one of my favorites, is when Joe Biden finishes a speech and starts shaking uh, the hands of ghosts. Uh, as as I said, very surreal reality we're living in. Daniel, why I brought up our faiths is uh, on a serious note. Now I'm of the Christian faith. You're of the Jewish faith. Um, Obviously, there are some things uh, that we uh, believe differently, but there are many things we have in common, of course. And Christianity is, is based on, on the Torah on, on many levels. We see it as the fulfillment, so we take the Torah, the Old Testament, etc., into the context of our beliefs. And Daniel, so in the Christian faith, when we look at the left, there's a spiritual dynamic where it's very clear for us because Satan hates humans, and he hates innocence in particular, hates children, and child sacrifice is central for the devil. In your faith, could you tell us a little bit, because we might see the, um, the, the, uh, the individual Satan uh, a little bit differently. I think we have some different theological perspectives on the quote-unquote accuser who is in, in your faith, but there's a lot of similarities. Tell us about why child sacrifice is also so vital for powers of evil in your, in, in, in your outlook of, of your faith. Well, there's one um, event, one particular form of pagan idol worship, which is the cult of Malach. Um, these are the people uh, the Bible warns about who would actually pass their children through the flames. They would sacrifice their children. Uh, this was one of the more horrific acts. And uh, the Jews at the time are warned against it. This is something that people actually went out and practiced and did. Now, you have to wonder what kind of people could do something like that. Well, there is an overlying idea there. Uh, and that idea simply is that um, you create complicity. So, you know, this is something that's not just ancient history. For example, uh, as you very well know, for example, in the Soviet Union, um, the KGB, various um, authorities would try to compromise people. They would try to get them first to do something small that was not that big, and then it would escalate. You do something worse and something worse and something worse. And if they can get you to do to keep going down the road, they can get you to do something truly horrifying, and then there's no way back. So the cult of Malach, they would actually get you to do something there is no way back from. There's, there's no way to turn around from. And this is something that we now see. If you can get um, a young woman at a young age to do something so horrifying, a crime like that, um, then there's no way, then from their perspective, there is no way back. Uh, they own this person now, they control them. Um, this person now will have to rationalize what they did. And the only way to rationalize this is to continue being invested um, in this movement. You talked about how angry these people are, um, the protesters, the pro-abortion protesters. Why are they really angry? What, what is behind all that rage? Well, what's behind all that rage is generally um, personal turmoil, um, pers uh, uh, an internal hell, and no, this is what this is. Uh, these people have done something that's very horrible. The only way for them to continue functioning is to project that outward, uh, to project that anger outward, to convince themselves that they're the victims, uh, that there is this great conspiracy against them, this patriarchal um, Christian, Judeo-Christian oppression um, that forced them to do this, that is trying to take away their rights, their personhood, is trying to reduce them to baby making machines. You know, all these are just words. At the bottom line is there is this great yawning sense of guilt that they have to get away from, and they get away from it through displays of rage, through displays of callousness, um, through victimhood. All these are really manifestations of what these people have done to themselves and what has been done to them. Thank you so much, Daniel. It's, it's so uh, indicative, so telling 
you know, whenever you see, like even recently when, when, uh, when this happened with the Supreme Court, you can just predict it right away. There's just going to, they look like, they look like possessed people that are just about to have an exorcism and the priest comes in with holy water. Just the foaming in the mouth and the rage. I mean, when the left faces the prospect that child sacrifice will be taken away from them, just ferocious rage. They need to sacrifice children and they also need to get to the children. You've written a fascinating uh, article, The Left's War on Childhood, and you touch on this you know, throughout your work. And they really, really need to get to the kids all the time. So now DeSantis is really in their way. I mean, Daniel, can you imagine getting really, really angry that you can't discuss sexuality with a four-year-old? It just, something's very wrong here, but the left is furious that DeSantis is getting in their way of their desire to talk about sexuality with kids. And they've, of course, their war is branding this is that you're not allowed to say the word gay and that's actually not what's happening. So they're always twisting all of this. But tell us about the left's war on childhood. So the left is all about control as we were discussing. Uh, They claim that they're doing this control in the name of empowerment. And their goal obviously is to get to people at the youngest age possible. So schools have always been um, a Uh, recruiting ground for them. There's a reason why so many teachers are from the left, because the left pushes people into education because it understands if you control education, uh, you control elementary schools, high schools, colleges, you effectively control the next generation. This has paid off in a very big way for the left. We, I don't need to elaborate and now we can just look around at the country to see how it has paid off. They go into areas of communication, particularly those targeting children, but they also very much thrive on warping children. Um, They thrive on taking the things that we care about, that we value, that are sacred to us, and destroying them. Because this is how you wage um, spiritual, ideological, conceptual warfare. You go after the things that are sacred to people, that are really the heart and soul of the people. If you can destroy those things, those people will just kind of fade away because they will be unable to, um, they will really be unable to function, unable to have, they will have no um, guiding values, no expectation of a better tomorrow. This is what the left has done in a catastrophic way already. Um, they attack in a variety of ways. They convince people, for example, that there is no future coming. You know, for the first time, actually Americans polled are saying that they don't think the world would be any better um, in the future than it was before, which is really kind of the, and physicists of the American optimism. And they go after children because we value, we, we find uh, children very precious. Uh, they're, they're the purpose of everything we do. They're the next generation. Um, when they can distort that, when they can pervert that, when they can hijack childhood, and when can they not just, ch- not just indoctrinate children, but when they can actually distort this whole idea, when they can pervert children, when they can break them, uh, then they've accomplished a great triumph. And, you know, frankly, there are and uh, not there's not an, there's a not insignificant portion of the left's movement that actually finds gratification from doing so in a variety of ways. Uh, we know who these people are. Um, we know they've been doing this for a while. So we understand that this is part of how they function. Uh, various uh, gay rights movements, particularly in Europe, try to legalize, um, remove age of consent. Uh, they try to legalize uh, sexual relationships with children. Uh, They've been careful about putting this forward again, because at the moment, even the majority of Americans are not remotely going to go for this, but they're trying to slice the onion a bit, the Maoist age of consent laws. So there is a portion of their um, social movement that is very much thrives on this, and that looks forward to being able to implement it. And of course, that is very angry and frustrated at having its victims, you know, the left pretends to be victims, Uh, the children are its actual victims, at having its victims taken away from it. Thank you, Daniel. Is it therefore a coincidence when we study the history of communism, when we study the Nazi era, when we look at what Hamas and ISIS and other jihadist groups do, there is always child sacrifice? Yeah, that is very much the case. Uh, These movements have a common model, which is that the children are our future. And by that, they mean that they're going to control the children and use them um, for their purposes. 
Um, they very much thrive on surrounding themselves with children, having young people, and showing that we now control the youth, everything else is irrelevant. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something that the American left very much also does in a very big way. And, uh, you know, uh, you have these African war worlds who recruit nine and 10 year olds to fight wars for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Child soldiers are a horrific sight, yet the left constantly surround themselves with children. Uh, they're already doing this at the anti, at the uh, pro-abortion protests where they bring out these little girls, these little girls who would be killed um, under abortion, but they bring them out and they make the argument that uh, we, we are fighting for these children, the ones that we actually allow to be born. Um, we are enlisting these children in this war. Um, we're going to turn these children into child soldiers to conduct this crusade. And you know, if you're against us, well, we already control the children. So evil and is always intermixed with leftist ideology.